welcome to the Crunchy Catholics. My name is Lauren. If you're brand new, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are still reading this book, The Handbook for Catholic Moms by Lisa Hendy. If this is your first time watching a Handbook for Catholic Moms video, basically we're just taking inspiration from each of the chapters because every single week, Every single chapter talks about a different topic that pertains to motherhood. Some topics pertain to both mothers and non-mothers. And this particular one goes for everybody. So, even if you're not a mom, this one can apply to you. So enjoy because next week it'll apply to you too. Yay! Today's Chapter 11 is weaving your way through the web using today's internet technology in an emotionally healthy fashion. Okay, just a PSA because I am a crunchy mama, okay? I am a crunchy Catholic, so let me give you a PSA. She's talking about emotional health with your tech, but there's a physical component too. I'm sorry, I hate to break it to you, but your cell phone has radiation, okay? and they still don't know the effects of this radiation on our bodies. In your cell phone insert, you can look at it. It says, do not put it so close to your face. It gives you like a certain amount of inches to put it to your face. So just throwing that out there, it is a total bummer. I have a love-hate relationship with my tech, and maybe you do too, because they provide us with so much, but it is so draining. Our technology can be so draining to us. So love-hate relationship. I love my tech. But as Christians, Catholics, we cannot love things more than people. We just can't. So it is important to keep our tech in, in an emotionally healthy place. All right, enough about the crazy crunchy radiation and EMF stuff. If you feel like looking it up, go for it, but I'm just gonna stop it there. Let's talk about the emotional health. One aspect of emotional health is how much time are we devoting to our tech? How much time are we devoting to this internet reality as much as I love you guys. And I really do. Like, it's in my heart. I love you guys. But this is a different type of friendship and relationship than the relationship that I have with, say, the people that are in my life day in, day out. And it is important, as the author suggests in her book, that we keep people that are in our day in day out life as priority. And sometimes I find myself getting really excited about the interactions I'm having online because I'm learning, I feel like I'm cultivating the pure and the true, and then I have a cranky kid. And I'm like, oh, cranky kid, just let me, let me cultivate some pure and true, but but you're cranky. And really guys, when that happens, I gotta check myself. I gotta say, I need to stop. I need to put this away because my children need me. This is present. This is now. This is important. This is vocation oriented. So, so I gotta put it away and I gotta put it down. I'm gonna confess something to you guys. Um, forgive me. Crunchy Catholic community, for I have sinned. It has been forever since my last confession on here, JK. But seriously, I downloaded an app. It's called Moment, and that tracks how long you are on your device. When you pick up your device, it starts tracking. Whether it's a text, a call, it doesn't matter. You just open it up, check the time, it tracks it. So I downloaded this app because I had a feeling that my internet usage was eh, not so great, not so great. So I downloaded it and I was on the internet for six hours. Six hours on my device. Six hours. That is a part-time job. What was I doing for those six hours? Texting friends, you know, 
answering emails. I have some work related stuff too. And then of course, crunchy Catholic comments and Instagram and blah, blah, blah. I'm getting a recipe for lunch and this and that and the other. Six hours, guys. That's out of control. So, so if you're wondering if you are using it for six hours, download that app. Or if you've done it before, tell me, confess, confess, tell me how long you are on your phone per day. When I saw that six hour time that I was on my device, I knew I had to check myself before I wrecked myself. So I gave myself a screen fast and I, <laughs> and I even announced it on the channel. So that was several months back and I did one week, no screen. No Netflix, no cell phone, no <laughs> computer, no email, nada, 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 nada. I loved it. It was amazing. I felt like I was going back to another time, a simpler time. It was so good. But day one, it was like bliss and butterflies and like unicorns and awesome, amazing. Day two, I was feeling antsy. Like, what am I gonna make for dinner if I don't have Pinterest to help me with this? What, how am I gonna do dishes without a podcast? <laughs> Speaking of podcasts, you want a good one? Bonnie and Bella, I'll link them below. But yeah, how am I gonna do dishes if I don't have a podcast? How am I going to, like, <laughs> crisis, right? Day three was even worse. Day three, I felt like I was having an existential crisis because there were some things that I hadn't checked into in my personal life when my, with my relationship with God, with my relationship with my husband, my kids, this and that, that were coming to the surface because my brain could actually hear its thoughts. And by day three, I was wigging out. I'm crying. I'm like, oh, I'm such a horrible person. Blah, blah, blah. But by day four, I was feeling a little bit better and I was on the road to resolving things and just having a really good attitude about it. So if you need a screen free week, highly recommend it. Now, going back to the technology, on the one hand, I was so grateful to have it again because I'm just a social person and I really love that interaction. I love being able to text my friends all day long, especially throughout the day when you're having hard mother times, like, hey girl, thinking of you, hope you're well, you know, this and that. But on the other hand, I, I, was, I was changed because I could never just go straight back to the way it was because I was aware of how awesome it was without it. My husband does not have a smartphone. He has a flip phone from the early 2000s. That thing has not broken. I think he's had it since late high school, early college. It's so insane. Whenever we go somewhere and he pulls out his phone that literally has T9 texting still, people just, they're blown away. And he gets made fun of, but in a way, sometimes I'm envious of him because he doesn't have that same attachment to the smartphone that I think a lot of us have. So <laughs> do any of you guys still have a T9 texting phone? Like, <laughs> I think you're pretty cool if you do because I thought my husband was the only one. So let me know if you know somebody with a T9 phone, <laughs> a flip phone that doesn't even have speakerphone. That's how old it is. But yeah, so screen free was good for me. But yeah, always keeping that in check. How do we have a healthy balance of pressing into those cool resources on the internet and still living our lives completely and fully? Like right now, I'm making a YouTube video for you and I'm hearing my kids laughing and I'm like, should I just like shut this off and go like hang out with those guys? <laughs> but I think it's a balance. 
it's not, you're not going to be a hundred percent present all the time, but it's making that intentional time to be present, that intentional time to cultivate your relationship with your husband, cultivate your relationship with your kids to literally say, phone, you are off right now because I am cultivating life. And so I think that is cool for me to do just to separate that. What else? She also talks about in this chapter, what else do she talk about? Oh, this was written in 2010. Um, so a lot of it, <laughs> she talks about consider starting uh, your own blog, um, learn how to post and share photos and videos online. And I think we all know how to post and share videos online unless you're my husband because he doesn't have a smartphone. <laughs> Do any of you guys use Google Reader? Is that still a thing? She talks about Google Reader as a way to subscribe to your different blogs and then it pops it up in one spot. That's cool, especially if you're trying to just, you know, narrow your scope a little bit. I haven't used it, but I remember hearing about it way back when. I don't know, is that still a thing? I don't really know. Um, Let's see, so yes. Real versus virtual. Family boundaries, yes, yes. Tangled in the web, yes. Video sharing, yes. Absolutely, yes. Um, can you tell I'm out of ideas? But just, I hope you <laughs> enjoyed this wacky video. I'm like tired, but um, if you're considering a screen-free week, I totally recommend it just to kind of, I'm totally the kind of person that goes clean, like with eating and stuff, and then I reintroduce. So with tech, it's like clean and reintroduce, clean and reintroduce. So that, you know, it works. It works because then you figure out where your weak spots are and you can like ease back into it. I hope you got something from this video. If you did, let me know in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Take care of yourselves. Again, that podcast is Bonnie and Bella. They're some dear friends of mine. And I did want to plug them because they're just such a sweet family. And they are living the pure and the true. And they're just starting out that podcast. So go ahead and check them out and let them know that Lauren from Crunchy Catholic sent you. I would really appreciate that. And I'll link them below along with all the other beautiful mommy YouTubers that are doing this collaboration and who I'm totally becoming really good web friends with. I just appreciate these women. I have interacted with some more than others, but all of them just bring something different to the table and I love watching their videos, so I think you will too. Okay, I think I'm done. I hope you like this, and I will see you on Thursday.